You're watching the Egg Bowl Special with WCBI Sports. Welcome into our 2022 Egg Bowl Special. John Sokoloff, Cam Dyer, Gracie Barra hanging out with you. This should be one heck of a game, guys, but I want to get something out of the way, get things rolling. The elephant in the room. We reported that Lane Kiffin plans to step down from the position on Friday and plans to take the Auburn head coaching job. Uh, it was nice to see Lane have so much fun on Twitter at my expense. And, you know, it's one way to put it. We, <laughs> we certainly thought it was fun. I'm not <laughs> sure you thought the same. Hey, as long as he's having a good time on Twitter, I guess. And it was also great to see how passionate certain Ole Miss fans are that reached out to me. But, again, he's expected to take that job, and he's expected to resign on Friday. What were your guys' thoughts on the news? Cam, why don't we start with you? Yeah, well, my thing is I'm wondering how much better of a job Auburn really is than Ole Miss over uh, Lane Kiffin's tenure that they've really, Ole Miss have been the most successful program in the state of Mississippi since he's been here, and he's going to Auburn. That is second fiddle to Alabama you know, ever since we can remember. They've had some success, but we all know that Alabama is still the top dog in that state, and him trying to top it is going to be interesting. One thing, a couple weeks ago, when they lost to Alabama, he was asked why that was such an emotional time for him, and he said you don't get very many opportunities to beat Alabama. Well, if he takes this Auburn job, and like we reported, he's planning on doing so, then he'll have that chance every single year. Sure. And I think that's an opportunity that he looks forward to. Grace, what about you? I think we were talking about this, and it's, to me, in my opinion, so expected and unexpected at the same time, if that makes any sense. When Brian Harson was fired, Lane Kiffin was immediately the first name thrown out because at the time, Ole Miss was rolling. Obviously, they've had a few more losses since then, but just really the top of the list guy. But like you said, you know, is Auburn really that much better of a job? And that's kind of where the unexpected part comes in for me. But, yeah. A lot no, going on. No doubt, no doubt. So why don't we get to the game this year. We'll start with the Ole Miss Rebels for that preview. The dynamic rushing duo has been lethal and a big reason they're 8-3 and three and were in the college football playoff conversation during that Alabama game just a week and a half ago. Freshman Quinshawn Judkins, 1,385 yards, leads the SEC. And Zach Evans is sixth in the conference with 899. Now USC, Jackson, Dart, Former USC QB has been at the helm under center, but the Egg Bowl means much more to the kids from Mississippi. Here are thoughts from some of those guys and Lane on the rivalry. Seems like there's not a lot of love in the relationship, I guess. It's a positive way, a nice way of putting it. But, you know, it means a lot to a lot of people. And, um, you know, been fortunate to turn it back our direction the last couple of years and trying to keep it that way. What people don't understand is like just from me being in this city and like just hearing, oh, we got to be Mississippi State, Mississippi State, Ole Miss. So like me growing up in it, I just was basically taught not to like uh, Mississippi State, but it's gonna be a it's gonna be a great game. I feel like it's one of the biggest rivals in college football. So being from Mississippi, uh, the goal is don't lose because. You want to have bragging rights for 365, so that's something you can take with you for the rest of your life. So, It's so great to see just how much this game means to certain players. I mean, I think if you're not from the state and you've been there for a couple of years, it, it starts to resonate with you, the magnitude that this game's effect can have. But, I mean, if you're from Mississippi, I mean, this is the biggest day of the year if you're a Mississippi sports fan. But, all right, so you guys have been covering Mississippi State football all year. What are your thoughts on the Bulldogs, Grace? Let's start with you. I think the biggest thing about the Bulldogs is that they can look like a completely different team from week to week. And I say that as, you know, let's take an example, the Kentucky game. That did not look like the same Bulldogs that, you know, stomped Arkansas at home, albeit without K.J. Jefferson, but still just completely night and day. But I think if this Bulldog team comes out like the one that we've seen at home with those cowbells, obviously no cowbells in Oxford this time, but could really give Ole Miss a run for its money. Sure, a little bit of inconsistency. Yeah, I mean, something that really has stood out to me is kind of the lack of consistent offensive production. You talked about that Kentucky game. That was just an absolute struggle for both teams to get anything going offensively. And that's not something that we've come to expect in a Mike Leach-led offense. I mean, he is the air raid. He is the offensive mastermind. And we've seen maybe glimpses of it this season, but we haven't seen them put it together, like you said, 
on a week-to-week -week basis. But the defense has really been able to kind of keep them in games all year, which has been very impressive. And, I mean, we'll see how the defense can handle this Ole Miss team, that up-tempo, and that deadly off uh, rushing attack. One point to add to that I think is really interesting is Mike Leach's frustration with his receivers kind of all – season long is not something you necessarily want in an air raid and, it, no. and that's where that inconsistency I really have seen come definitely out. we'll hear from him talking about his receivers <laughs> later but the Mississippi State Bulldogs seven and four on the season Leach's crew has studs on both sides of the football quarterback Will Rogers first in the SEC in passing yards by over 300 at 3,474 32 touchdowns just five interceptions on the year defensive back Emmanuel Forbes leads the conference in picks it's not particularly close he's got six on the season and Nathaniel Watson and Jet Johnson both top four in tackles. Here are some Mississippi State players and Leach on Thursday's Egg Bowl. I think you fully understand it, unless you're from here, I've been a part of the game, but you know, this, this is the game that everybody thinks about every year. You know, it doesn't matter where we play it and doesn't matter who's ranked higher, whatever, what, what the record is, but you know, it's the biggest game of the year every year. It means a ton, you know, just growing up in it. Uh, it's been a huge part of my life. I've been coming to these games ever since I was a young pup, so, I mean, it's, it hits home for sure. i got family that's Ole Miss people, and I just want bragging rights. I haven't been able to brag. you got to play fast. I think the, the key with them is the quarterback, the quarterback, how quick he can transition and, and operate without being affected, I think, is key. I mean, they have, they have plenty of good players, and... Uh, and you can even argue he's not the you know the best of all of them. I mean he's a very good one, but I think he's key because he's the guy that transi transitions it to everybody else. All right, this game means so much to both sides, but let's see what it's looked like the last five years. We'll look at the last five Egg Bowls to be exact. All right, so 2017, these games haven't disappointed. Ole Miss. Took down number 14, Mississippi State, 31-28. There were some extracurricular activities beforehand because, of course. <laughs> and this one wasn't as close as it looked. State trailed by two possessions or more for most of the second half, but was without starting quarterback Nick Fitzgerald for most of it. He was carted off in the first with a leg injury. All right, so we'll go to 2018, the Nick Fitzgerald revenge game. You see him right there, his first game against Ole Miss since the injury. He threw a touchdown pass and ran for two. The Bulldogs cruise past him 35-3. How can we forget 2019, the crazy ending to an egg bowl? I mean, probably the craziest of the last five years or longer. <laughs> Elijah Moore, the urination celebration to make it 21-20, but that pushed him back 15 yards. They missed the extra point and State prevailed 21 to 20. So how about we go 2020, the first year Leach and Lane met as SEC head coaches. Ole Miss was up 21-7 in the first half. Bulldogs fought all the way back to make it a one score game late. With the ball, Will Rogers had a chance at the Ole Miss 36 down seven, but the dogs could not connect. Ole Miss won at 31-24, who could forget last year. Ole Miss in firm control of this one for most of it. The Rebels topped the Bulldogs 31-21 to clinch the first 10-win season in program history, while Mississippi State ended the regular season 7-5, a four-win improvement from a year ago. And we all know Bully, but there's a new dog in the Magnolia State. I'll introduce you to both of the top dogs in this year's Egg Bowl. Welcome back to our Egg Bowl special, guys. We've got two of the most entertaining coaches in all of college football, so let's take a look at some of their best moments of the season. So you think there was a sentence or two that wasn't said last week? I mean, left out a phrase maybe, a couple words, uh, maybe a key adjective here or there. Well, I didn't know he was the player of the week until that because our SID doesn't tell me those things when we walk up here. You know, a guy's driving across this country, and then they get to Starkville, Mississippi, and all of a sudden there's these athletic-looking, friendly guys because we have great guys that don't have any hands. Well, I didn't do very good. I got fired after five games, so I'm probably not the one to ask how to do that. You know, it's not perfect. I, I would definitely purge a couple, but not very many. I mean, I less here than most places. Like when people say, hey, do you live right by the country club? And then they're like, hey, does the house look like this? I'm like, well, if you don't know, how are you describing the house exactly? Go on a road trip somewhere. Pick out someplace cool. Go on a road trip. None of the boring stuff. I'll give it to you after a win, not a loss. Because then you guys write good things about it when I say it. I can't say I've ever met a basket weaving major, uh, but it would, I'd be curious to see their baskets if such a thing exists. They got checked birth certificates. I mean, these guys are supposed to be 
in eighth grade, like, and, and I kept singing to Knox and I'm like, there's not a chance these guys are in, are in eighth grade from Arizona. And you look like a guy that's really good in math and things. I mean, because that's why everybody goes into journalism, because they love math. No, we'd really like to not have really unique, great players that play early. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> you got to admit that was a bad question. Maybe it'll be like this, like those dinosaur ants like this are, you see. I mean, we just walked five minutes from the field and you didn't tell me a thing about it so thank you you don't want to go around picking up rat turds when there's elephant turds flying everywhere you know let's try to focus on the elephants instead <laughs> leech's uh, fat little girlfriend's rant was allegedly an honorable mention didn't quite for you. make the cut didn't we, make we only the cut. had a 30 minute show john it's okay it's all right but so we got two entertaining coaches We've got two entertaining uh, unofficial mascots. We sure do. We all know and love Bully, and he has been a staple in this state. But let's see how long he's been here. He's been here since 1935 is when they introduced him as a live mascot. Now we're on Bully number 21. This is Jack. He is an English Bulldog, and he turned eight this past October. And he's still rocking it on the sidelines, no matter if the game is at Davis Wade or on the road, maybe waddling a little bit there, but he is there, rain or shine. And his favorite part of game day, John, is that he gets an entire bag of treats. Now, here is his new friend, Juice. Juice Kiffin is the fur baby of head coach Lane Kiffin at Ole Miss, and he became the unofficial mascot this past season. He's a lab, and he's only nine months old, a little bit scared of fireworks there. He comes from the Magnolia State, and he's sure excited for his first Egg Bowl. All right. Welcome back into our Egg Bowl special. I'm joined here alongside by Stefan Kreischnik of the Clarion Ledger. He covers Mississippi State for them. Been doing it for a little bit of time now. This is going to be your second Egg Bowl, yep. but the first time up in Oxford. So I want to ask, Ole Miss has now broken their 14-game home winning streak. Is there an advantage to playing the Egg Bowl at home with how much the state travels for this game? Yeah, I'm interested because, you know, at the end of the day, I think it's more important that state's playing on the road than it is Ole Miss playing at home. Like, I know they've had that winning streak, but when you look at the home schedule that, ha that Ole Miss had this year, it wasn't really the most daunting schedule, so I think they were able to get away with some more wins to, to keep that streak going up until Alabama came to town. But for Mississippi State, I mean, they've struggled a lot when they've gone on the road this year. I mean, you think back to those games – you know, at Kentucky, at Alabama, at LSU, they struggle a lot on the road. So I'm interested to see how the Bulldogs respond, you know, when they get to Oxford. So your second egg goal, but it's going to be Mike Leach's third egg bowl. He's 0-2 in it so far. Do you think that this egg bowl is going to be really important for him in terms of how hot his seat is going to be after if he does no not get a win? No doubt. I, I think it's huge for him. I, you know, he, he downplays throughout a bit because he doesn't want his players to get too caught up in the emotion of it. But at the end of the day, you know, he was 1-8. Or one and seven, something along those lines, and his rivalry, you know, when he was at Washington State against Washington, you know, now you come here where the rivalry probably means even more. If you're 0 3, not many coaches stick around to see a fourth. I think he will. He'll be back next season. And I think part of that has to do with the fact that Mississippi State doesn't have an athletic director yet. You're not going to have a new guy uh, come in and, and fire Mike Leach right away. So I think Mike Leach has another year, along with the contract extension that he got, to at least come back next season. If you're 0 3, you're going into next season. If you don't win 9, 10 games and you're still losing the Egg Bowl, there's going to be some people pushing for your job. I like how you stuck in the it just means more because they are in the SEC. You have, you have to do that. But with this Ole Miss team, it seems like all they've been able to talk about this year is their run game. Yeah. How equipped do you think this Mississippi State defense is to stop the run? You know, I, I think the state defense is good uh, or at least better than the numbers show in terms of stopping the run. Um, but I'm interested to see how they respond to the tempo. That's going to make it tougher if, if Ole Miss is running the ball and moving quick and you can't get guys substituted. And we've seen at times this season, especially in the second half, if State isn't getting substitutions the way they wish, that's when teams have had some, some success. So I think Ole Miss, if they're you know, playing at the pace that they usually play, will affect State and hence make you know, Ole Miss's running game a bit better. Now more kind of on the Mississippi State side. We've seen this air raid offense's ceiling and its floor yeah. kind of throughout this season. How do you think that the Ole Miss defense is going to match up against Mike Leach's air raid? Yeah, I think it, from Ole Miss's defense, I think it's a good matchup because they do a good job of bringing pressure without, you know, bringing a true blitz, right? They can have three, four linemen, you know, coming after the quarterback and get some big pressure. Um, so I think that becomes tougher on Will Rogers and kind of what they're able to do. Um, it, it's going to be interesting to see how, first, Mississippi State's offensive line responds, and second, if Mike Leach, you know, changes some things up. We've seen him the past couple games run some jet sweeps, you know, had some motion, see if they can throw off 
you know, Ole Miss's defense. And on top of that, is he going to run some more two-back sets, have an extra guy back there blocking, you know, if Ole Miss is able to get past that first line of defense. So it's, it's going to be interesting. I think it's a, a good matchup based on how Ole Miss's defense works. I think there's a way to, you know, slow Ole Miss's defense down a bit and have some success. So now for the tough question, <laughs> do you have a prediction for how this Egg Bowl is going to go? Yeah, you're putting me on the spot, and I just <laughs> want to note that last season I predicted uh, Mississippi State to win, so before any Mississippi <laughs> State fans get upset with me, uh, I'm taking Ole Miss. I think it's going to be a close game, and I, I saw the line open around five points, and I think it's dipped down to maybe even three points now or something along yeah, it's those lines. And I'm, I think State can keep it under that five-point line. I, I think it's going to be a back-and-forth game. I think it'll be a bit more competitive than last season, um, but I think the, the way the Ole Miss offense with their tempo works, I guess this Mississippi State defense, I just don't think it's a great matchup uh, for Mississippi State. And, uh, and I think Mike Leach will be 0-3 uh, in the Egg Bowl, which I'm sure a lot of State fans don't want to hear. Well, I am sure excited to see how it pans out. I hope you have fun Thanksgiving yeah, up at the be, Egg Bowl. Yeah, it'll be a crazy game. You can, you can count on that. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's the Egg Bowl. What else do you exactly. expect from it? So thank you so much, Stefan, for joining us. And our Egg Bowl special will be back after the break. Welcome back to our Egg Bowl special. I'm joined by Michael Katz, Ole Miss beat writer for the Northeast Mississippi Daily Journal. Michael, let's start out with something relatively broad. How do you think the Ole Miss season has gone compared to how you thought it would? I think when when the season or before the season, I thought this was an eight and four, nine and three team. They're on the verge of, of being right there. I, I think the, the season is maybe develop differently than people thought, just in terms of, uh, of the style of play and, and how things sort of looked. Um, you know, we, we knew that the front half of the schedule was going to be a little bit more forgiving th than the back half, um, but I, I, I don't think we necessarily saw the specific games going the way they did in terms of, you know, I, I, think, I don't think anyone's surprised they lost to LSU, but that was a game they were up at, at halftime, and uh, the Alabama game they easily could have won that game. And so I think the record is going to look about the same as, as where I thought it would be. Um, but I think they're actually better than I thought they would be, just in terms of, of competing with the better teams. So you sound a little surprised that they're 8-3, and three, but you also think that they're playing a little bit better than you thought they would have. What gave you confidence that a team that lost its quarterback, a lot of receivers and running backs, what gave you the confidence that this team could play to this potential? I, I think part of it is is the scheme and the system. And, um, you know, I know players like Matt Corral and Sam Williams and, and all those guys don't come around very often, but... Uh, this is just a, an offense that's conducive to putting up numbers, kind of, you know, not regardless of who's in there, but it, it's a successful system. And I think the other thing, too, is just the way that they reloaded the roster so quickly with the transfer portal guys. What they did in the transfer portal, I think, is really is, is, is a big part of why I felt pretty good. Such an ever-changing form of college football that we have right now, and Lane Kiffin clearly has cashed in on that transfer portal incredibly well. So do you think these last few years, definitely eight wins this season, ten wins last year, do you think that's enough to build kind of a foundation for this program to be consistent for years to come? Because it's been in this position somewhat before but hasn't been able to hold on to it. Do you think it's attainable now? Yeah, I, I don't know if the, the building through the transfer portal is necessarily sustainable, and I don't know if anybody wants that to be the way that they consistently build teams I think it's good for like the quick rebuilds and I think we saw you know USC is a team that built itself up really quickly by you know going to the transfer portal because uh, recruiting takes time uh, but I think in a perfect world you're still building your team through that recruiting but I think the success the last couple years has helped the recruiting too I want a little bit of a preview with how you think it'll go and I'd like a score prediction if we're looking at what's given Ole Miss problems this year it's been mobile quarterbacks and it's been the threat of that of, of, of mobile quarterbacks with that sort of a run game that is what has killed them that is not what Mississippi State is. Yes, they've, they run the ball a lot better than we're used to, but I don't think anyone is going to mistake Will Rogers for a, a dual threat quarterback. He's great at what he does. Uh, he's, he's perfect for that system, um, but I think Ole Miss is okay with that sort of style of play when they don't have to worry about the running game as much. I think I had my prediction at like Ole Miss 34-24. Again, I know that people are upset with how last week went, but uh, I still think Ole Miss is, is, is a really solid team. Uh, I know they really want to win this. It's at home. It's the Egg Bowl. The weird things always happen, I know, but I just think in terms of, of, of Ole Miss running the ball, they're, they're going to do that. That's what they do. I think Jackson's going to, you know, play he, he's I know again people get caught up in, in him having some moments but for the most part he's he's gotten a lot better throughout the season I think he's going to do what uh, what he needs to do and 
I, I think that the, the most importantly, Ole Miss's defense is better suited for Mississippi State's offense than maybe they have been for some of the other ones they've seen recently. So Michael Katz of the Northeast Mississippi Daily Journal thinks that the Rebels are going to win and going to get that third consecutive Egg Bowl victory. Michael, thanks so much for joining me. Our Egg Bowl special will continue when we come back. Time for predictions, Cam. I got Mississippi State 31-17. I'll go Ole Miss 27-24. I got State 31-27. Thank you so much for tuning in and enjoy the game.